Hi everybody, it's Fana Kaitak. Today I thought I would take you guys on a little journey to the behind the scenes of how I created my latest picture for my In Bloom series. So sit back, get comfortable, and I really hope you guys enjoy this video. enjoyed that we're now going to jump straight into the composition and color shading so the composition as you can guess it's the first thing that I like to do um, I selected this picture because I really like the angle it was from a top-down perspective almost like a bird's eye view of this floral sleeping girl against like this mossy foresty background and actually this was the image that I had in mind when I was you know taking planning for this picture um, so I'm quite pleased with how it turned out so the composition bit actually takes the longest, as you can see, it's very meticulous, like here I am cleaning up the eucalyptus leaves. I didn't actually have enough eucalyptus leaves on me, so a little trick I like to do is take a picture of it in one place and then move the leaves into another place and take another photo, and then just grab bits from the second photo and bring them into the first to make the whole, you know, to make it look a bit fuller, like I had more. Um, but yeah, composition definitely, definitely takes the longest, and I think in this picture, to give you an idea, from start to finish, from composition right through to colour training, it took about three and a half hours. Um, yeah, so <laughs> you have to be quite patient and it's okay because I think while I was editing this I was watching like Always Sunny in Philadelphia so that kept me quite entertained. But the main thing I'm looking for when I'm compositing an image is balance. So I'm looking at things that are like how to make the image a bit more balanced in terms of how the model or the character sits in the frame as well as removing any distractions that you know would distract the viewer's eye from uh, the story that I want to tell. So in this case I'm just tidying up all these little like white branches. Did you guys notice the little bird skull in the picture? Um, yeah I didn't actually see that in real life and discovered that later in post processing so that was interesting. Kind of creepy but also very cool. So here we are just tidying up all these little branches. This definitely did take a lot longer than I wanted it to. Ideally what you'd want to do is tidy all this up when you're at the location itself because it will definitely save you a lot of time in Photoshop. But that day was very cold and Scarlet wasn't very very much and I was essentially just shooting by myself so I was thinking that there was no time for me to tidy it up on the location and I thought well it's okay I'll try my best to clean it up in Photoshop and if I couldn't clean it up 100% then I can always find ways to subdue um, the brightness of those distractions in Photoshop as well. So it did take a little bit of time but I'm quite happy with the results and I'm glad that I put the extra bit of time in Photoshop. Um, but ideally yes, if you can tidy up on location it would definitely definitely take, save you a lot of time in post processing, that's for sure. Um, my favourite tools to use when it comes to um, doing this process is the healing tool, the stamp tool and then of course using layer masks because when you're using layer masks you don't have to use the erase tool ever in your life and if you're not sure how to use layer masks then I would definitely recommend watching a couple of videos and getting familiar with them because they really are a great way to work very non-destructively. If you make mistakes it's okay, you can go back to that layer and tidy it up or get rid of it or whatever you want to do but there's room there there's room there to make mistakes 
and I'm often making mistakes so I definitely definitely appreciate having that function of layer mask. I'm sure that if you're already a composite photographer then you're very well versed in them but if you're not and if you're new then yeah consider using layer mask when it comes to your composition work. And here I am just tidying up and just like again removing any distractions and really just crafting the picture so that it tells the story that I really want it to. Um, again healing tool, stamp tool, they're saving the day. <laughs> and here I am just working on balance again with her hair. I thought it looked a little bit full on one side, not so full on the other, so I thought I'd just have a little play. And again, when you're playing with composite photography, you don't have to be too careful. You can just kind of toss and see how things work in different places. And once I'm happy with that, I will start my liquefying process, and that's just like tweaking the hair, tweaking the dress, making it a little bit fuller, maybe tweaking the leaves, making them fuller as well. And when I'm happy with that, I will do some skin cleaning using the heel tool and the stamp tool, and once I'm happy with that, I will do some dodging and burning. Now, when I'm dodging and burning, I always turn the image into black and white, and this is to remove any distraction of colour, and just lets me focus on light and shadow, and create a smooth transition between light and shadows. And yes, it does take a little bit of time, but it's certainly worth it because it does show in the final picture. Now, when I'm colour toning, more or less, I'm using a lot of the colour adjustments that Photoshop itself offers. Um, I also colour tone a little bit in Capture One, but for this picture, I did it in Photoshop. And so, it's, as you can see here, for all my layers, it's literally just Photoshop adjustment layers, along with some textures that I've taken myself um, of some flowers in, you know, blurred out flowers, and I'm using those textures for colour ideas. Um, so I'll just toss it on, throw it into overlay, see what happens, throw some more colour adjustments and essentially I'm building up colours at low opacities and very slowly and meticulously and that's so that I can get like a richer colour palette. Between compositing and colour toning I don't actually know which bit takes more time because they're both quite labour intensive but hopefully the final result is worth it and here is the before and after. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and take care guys, bye!